السلام علیکم میرا نام ہے ایلن کیسلر میں امریکہ میں بیٹھ کر ہمیشہ پاکستان کے بارے میں سوچتا رہتا ہوں پیس بی وتھ یو مائی نیم از ایلن کیسلر ہلو آئی ایم ان امریکہ آئی ایم آلویز تھنکنگ اباؤٹ پاکستان بیکاز پاکستان از ناٹ این آرڈینری پلیس سو ٹوڈے آئی ایم ڈوئنگ سم تھنگ لٹل بٹ ڈفرینٹ آئی جسٹ وانٹ ٹو tell everybody about a book that I am reading by a young man who I met last week very wonderful person so this is the book right here it's by Ricardo Gonzalez contact from planet Apu Here is Ricardo. So I very highly recommend everybody to read this book. Um, because, as I have said many times, there are many people visiting us from other planets. And although this knowledge has been suppressed by the mainstream media and by different factions that want to keep us from knowing about it. We have been contacted for a long, long time by people from many different civilizations outside of the Earth, or inside of the Earth, or even in other dimensions. Um, but one of the best records of this contact between people from other planets and from Earth is this book. So it's a very, very good way to become introduced to the idea if you want to know something about people from other planets who doesn't <laughs> because uh, we have been told so many false things by Hollywood and by different people that talk about extraterrestrials and make them very scary <laughs> and our enemies actually uh, there are a few extraterrestrials that are not friendly but almost all of them are friendly And uh, many of them are very, very friendly and are helping us. They're doing a lot to help us. So we should uh, take their help. <laughs> so Ricardo, as myself also, I have met extraterrestrials, as I've spoken about many, many times, since I was nine years old, uh, at least. So uh, Ricardo also had been in touch with extraterrestrials since being a child. And uh, now he's written a very good book uh, telling about his sightings of extraterrestrial craft and then his meetings with the occupants of those craft. And then especially importantly is their message that they are giving to us, uh, which is a message of love. It's a message of peace. It's a message of progress, of truth and justice. The same message that all good people have always given and always encouraged everyone forever. Uh, so, Carla Reichman is, Reichman is saying, start a new show, meet a extraterrestrial, I would watch. <laughs> um, well, I don't know, but I already do have a show. Of course, it's in Urdu, um, which we have, I think, about... 13 or 14 episodes have been filmed and have been posted on the internet called the Secret News, I think the Secret News Show with Sayed Mubashir, a Pakistani gentleman who has been interviewing me. And it is largely about extraterrestrials and about their react interactions with humanity also. Um, and information from extraterrestrial sources. <clears throat> But... Um, I just want to stress one point, uh, that I'm not the only one. <laughs> There are hundreds and thousands and probably tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, if not millions, but certainly many tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of earthlings who have met extraterrestrials. And many of them have given their stories and written books about it. But this uh, is a very good way to introduce yourselves. If you're not already familiar uh, with all the people who are 
meeting extraterrestrials, uh, then you should read this book. I recommend it highly, in which uh, he gives very, very good scientific evidence and uh, very clear, clear evidence of the fact that extraterrestrials are contacting Earth, and they're very good people. So, uh, please look up Richard Gonzalez, Contact from Planet Apu. Planet Apu is uh, from the Alpha Centauri, very the nearest star that we know about, at least the astronomers talk about, uh, which is about 4.2 light years from here. So that planet Apu, and they, they look very much like us. They are even related to us. Uh, they are a little bit taller than we are, mostly more than two meters tall, six and a half, seven feet, some eight feet tall even. Uh, but they look just like human beings. So Adnan Gondal says, my wife says I am alien. There are many of us who uh, have human bodies but who are in one sense extraterrestrial. Spiritually, we have connection with other civilizations from other stars and other planets. So maybe your wife is not completely wrong, Adnan <laughs> uh, But Because you probably do have some connection with other civilizations, although you may even not be aware of it. No, many people are not aware of it, but it is happening right now. Uh, people are contacting us from other planets, and you may or may not have seen extraterrestrial craft. Many people have that have never talked about it. When I started talking about it, uh, quite a number of my contacts through Facebook began talking about the fact that they, Pakistanis, had seen in Karachi, in the northern part of Pakistan also. Uh, even there was a newspaper article in, published in Sialkot, or uh, I don't remember where it was published, but an Urdu newspaper published an article a long time ago about an extraterrestrial craft that appeared over Sialkot. Look into this book. Ricardo Gonzalez, Contact from Planet Apu. And just do a little search on the internet and you can get more information. So I'm going to see if there are any questions or comments or suggestions from the start of this. Um, Carla Rickman, I already read her comment about start a new show, meet a extraterrestrial, uh, and put it in English. Okay, this can be the first one. <laughs> we will talk about uh, meeting extraterrestrials in English. It's a very good suggestion. Thank you, Carla. And uh, Carla says also, hi, Alan, need to go. Just wanted to say hi. Please come to the show someday. Yes, I certainly will come to your show, Carla. Everything has a proper time. But certainly, my good wife and teacher, she will also come, I believe, on your show. So just be patient. Um, let's see what other comments. Hi, Lynn Chittick is watching, and she says, great. Yes, this is very great, very important information about uh, our membership in the League of Nations not the League of Nations on Work, the League of Civilizations. There is a federation of many, many planets. They're almost all very, very good and mostly human-looking also, although some look somewhat different than human beings. Um, Tariq Pirzada, lots of regards and love from Pakistan. I am going to Pakpatan tomorrow to participate in annual Urs of Baba Farid. MashaAllah. I have been to Pakpatan, and although you may not believe it, I met Papa Farid in person also. Uh, he is still alive, and he sometimes appears to his followers. So please take my greetings and blessings to Pakpatan for. <laughs> Thank you very much. Shuja uh, Javed, Adab Chacha Jan, how are you? How is Jachi John? I am quite well, thank you. I have a slight cough and cold, but I'm very happy to be able to continue talking with you. I wasn't planning this, but yet last night my wife 
who is also my spiritual teacher, suggested that I should do a show this morning. So I don't know how long it will be, but we will have a little show this morning. And it's a new topic. I hadn't expected this. Meet an, extra, meet an extraterrestrial. <laughs> so I will tell a little bit about my meetings with extraterrestrials, since this is what this show is about. The new show <laughs> just started. Just given the title now, I didn't even know what more that we would talk about other than that I wanted to mention this book by Ricardo Gonzalez, a very wonderful young man who is in regular contact with uh, human-looking extraterrestrials who are actually related to us, who live currently on the planet called Apu, uh, which is a planet uh, at the Alpha Centauri star system, only 4.2 light years away, the nearest big star. Uh, nearest visible star in our dimension, you could say. So, uh, yes, there are very important things that we all need to learn about. And there are very important lies that we all need to get away from. <laughs> the main lie is that extraterrestrials don't exist. Only human beings exist in this whole universe. No other planets are inhabited. That's a big lie. Uh, there are millions and billions, probably trillions and even quadrillions, un uncountable numbers of civilizations on different planets where people live. So that's the first lie we must get free from, that only human beings exist in this huge uh, expanse of the cosmos. Uh, and the second lie we need to get rid of is that all those extraterrestrials are very evil and dangerous and they're trying to conquer humanity or take over the world. They are, many of them are much more technologically advanced, and they could easily have taken over and conquered the Earth if they'd wanted to. <laughs> um, so that's another lie. Mostly, I don't know what percentage, 95%, some say 98%, some say 90%, some say maybe even less, but at least about 90% or more of the extraterrestrials are good and friendly and favorable and even helpful to us. There are some that are not, but they are in a small minority. So um, I will just take this opportunity to tell again the story, which I've told before on a Facebook Live more than once, but I will say that uh, when I was nine years old, I met an extraterrestrial for the first time that I can remember. And she, it was a woman, the captain of a spaceship, a typical flying saucer. And uh, at that time, I was walking home from school. And uh, as I walked through a forested area, a clearing in the forest, there was a flying saucer parked <laughs> on stilts, on three stilts. And there was a, a stairway that had been put down and at the top of the stairway, in the doorway of this flying saucer, was a woman and several other uh, people who may have been men or women, I'm not sure. But uh, she was taller than they were, and she was obviously the captain. And she motioned to me to come. <laughs> so uh, I did. I was In those days, you have to remember, we're talking about 1956, before all of these Hollywood movies about scary uh, extraterrestrials. Uh, so in those days, we weren't scared of extraterrestrials. We were very eager to meet them, because there were many stories in the press in the 1950s about uh, extraterrestrials meeting human beings and about extraterrestrials flying, about flying saucers. There were even reports in the newspapers, even pictures, photographs published. And uh, so everyone was talking about extraterrestrials and was eager to meet them. So I was very happy when I saw this flying saucer there parked right on the ground in this <laughs> between my home and my school on my way home. So I walked up the stairway as she had motioned to me. She, she didn't, went just like this, you know, come on up. And then uh, she was so kind and loving, she put out her arms and embraced me. I hugged her and she was so kind, so sweet that I felt she was my real mother. In fact, when I got home, I told my mother, you're not my mother. <laughs> I told my biological mother, you're not my real mother. Of course, she was the 
mother of my body, but uh, I feel like this extraterrestrial lady was my real spiritual mother. So I still feel that way. And uh, what more should I say now? I think that's enough. I don't. I can tell more. And if you go back and look through my old Facebook uh, chats, you might find that chat where I tell in detail. I even showed a picture which I had made of her spaceship and of her. I don't know where it is right now. I have it somewhere. But so uh, I've spoken about this several times before. Uh, on my Facebook chats, so maybe they weren't live chats, I can't even remember, some may have been, but they were recordings that I had made. In any case, you can see more details there if you want, and I can talk more about them uh, when there are more questions about it. All right, so um, thank you, thanks very much to Carla Rickman. We will now have a new show, <laughs> which is called Mita Extraterrestrial. And we will talk about uh, extraterrestrials who are coming to our planet and meeting human beings. Mihakliakat says, I have never watched any alien ever. Uh, many people have not, but many, many people, I think it must be lakhs of people, hundreds of thousands of people who have seen extraterrestrials and seen extraterrestrial craft, photographed them, and uh, this book by Ricardo Gonzalez gives a detailed story about his meetings uh, with extraterrestrials, in which they are now actually, on many occasions, dozens, hundreds even of people who have seen the extraterrestrial craft after they announced they will appear at a certain time. Um, so this, he's from Peru, Ricardo is from Peru, and in Peru for close to 70, 80 years, uh, people have been meeting the same extraterrestrial group from the planet Apu. Uh, and I'm just looking at the book now because I've been reading it, and I think, I think I'll just tell you a couple of very important points uh, from the book. Um, first of all, Ricardo was, uh, at the age of 14, was the first time when he really became aware of extraterrestrials. Um, even as a child, he would see extraterrestrial craft, but he really didn't know much about them. See, in Peru, uh, people are quite open to and even familiar with extraterrestrials, and they have many, many people. It's common knowledge that there are UFOs in the sky above uh, Peru. So uh, it wasn't unusual for him. But at the age of 14, uh, he saw a UFO in broad daylight. And it was very bright. And he uh, saw then, in the next few days, there were many reports in the newspapers about many people had seen this uh, flying saucer. So then the next important thing happened. I'm just trying to see the date which he gives here. Um, when he received a telepathic message. Yes, this is October of 1993, when Ricardo was 19 years old. And uh, he heard a a voice saying to him in his head, saying to him, be sure to keep looking. And the voice sounded like that of a young man who was communicating with him in a very friendly way. And he was stunned and reluctant to believe that this could be possible. And then he heard the voice continuing, we are extraterrestrial beings and we are contacting you. And then the voice said, you will be given preparation so that you can meet us physically. And Ricardo writes, he couldn't believe this, what, was, what he was hearing in his head. And he thought, because he was a student then studying for exams, so he thought maybe he's just fatigued from all of his study, and so he's having some sort of uh, hallucination or 
why was he hearing this voice? Is it just his imagination? Um, but then he replied to that voice, I need something that can prove this is real. And uh, the voice responded, surprisingly, come up to the roof of your house and there you will see us. So Ricardo said, I thought this is impossible, <laughs> now what to do? But having nothing to lose, he says, I decided to go up to the terrace of their apartment and his brother happened to be there, so he, his brother went with him up to the roof, and there they saw a UFO, a light moving in the sky. And they looked at each other, Ricardo and his brother, what, what is that? It's a UFO. So it was a dense red light, and it began to move in their direction, and then they could see that it was a triangular shape, uh, looking sort of like a boomerang. Uh, and it just briefly came over their house and then turned and flew back towards the Andes Mountains nearby. So <clears throat> they were so excited that they ran down to tell their parents and sister, and they all climbed to the roof too, and they all saw it. The, the parents and three children, they all saw that object as it was just leaving. So... Uh, then this is what Ricardo writes. He heard a voice at that time after the craft had left, and it said something like this. We come with good intentions. As we proceeded with you today, we've done before with other people, and we will continue to do so, we will continue to do in the future so that they will become aware of our presence. You will not only be contacted by us, there are also other beings that are waiting. So not only this, these people from Apu, but there are people from other planets also who are contacting human beings. And when I met Ricardo, and I told him I had met extraterrestrials when I was nine years old, he was very happy to hear that, and uh, we immediately became friends. We felt like old friends. And so this was the first experience when Ricardo uh, had this internal communication telepathic communication uh, and he learned later that this being who was speaking to him was named Antarel and was from the planet Apu and that he would meet him physically soon so that is the first chapter of this book which I've summarized briefly part of it so please be open don't be scared don't think I'm crazy don't think Ricardo's crazy uh, they are coming more and more. And you will probably meet them. In fact, I'm quite sure it won't be long until the mass media uh, stops being controlled by a small clique of small cabal of very evil and selfish people. And the mass media will start telling the truth more and more also. We'll, we'll all find out about this. But we have to begin now by telling people. So these extraterrestrial visitors are good. They are friendly. They are helping us. And they're even related to us. <laughs> so, I will continue this. Uh, maybe I'll just read parts of the book or tell a summary of each chapter so you can get some introduction to it. And you will be encouraged, I'm sure, to get the book or to find out more information about this. All right. I think I'm going to end now. I'll just see a couple of questions. Aisha Ali says, Oh my days, amazing. Yes, this is amazing, but it's true. It's uh, something we are, it's amazing to us because we have not been told about the truth about extraterrestrials. But uh, it's not really amazing. Miss Basar, what, from which religion they belonged? Um, they don't really have different religions. Uh, they all understand that there's one God. And we are all servants of the same God. We may have different uh, types of ways of understanding God and worshiping God, but they understand that there's only one religion, which you may call it by any name. You may call it Deen. You may call it religion. You may call it Islam. You may call it truth. It doesn't matter what you call it, but there's only one religion, which is that there is one God of everything, everyone. And we are all members of the same family, servants of the same God. So we should be
be friendly with each other. Human beings, at least all members of one human race, all descendants of one Adam and Eve, that's the way we understand it. Uh, we're all brothers and sisters, literally. We should be friendly with each other. We should not be fighting with each other because of thinking we have different nations, different religions, somehow other people are our enemies. No. Certainly even uh, people from other planets are our friends, so why should we be unfriendly with our own human beings, our own human relatives? All right. Let's uh, end now, and I'm going to continue this tomorrow. So we will do this show in English, because I have been doing. You can see if you did, it will be very easy for you to find if you go down my Facebook uh, page a little bit. Go down this page, you can see the Secret News Show. There, I think, were 13 or 14 shows. Each of them is about half an hour, some a little longer, uh, which we're talking about extraterrestrials and about... Well, maybe we talk other issues too, but mostly about related to extraterrestrials and secret space programs. Okay, thank you all very much. Uh, if I can, I'm going to continue this daily at 7 o'clock. Meet an extraterrestrial. <laughs> or maybe we'll have some other name, but that's what Carla suggested. But it will be, we'll talk about extraterrestrials because it's a very, very, perhaps the most important topic for us. Uh, earthlings to understand today that we are not alone and that there are many other planets that are inhabited many of them look just like us many of them are related to us uh, so let's enjoy this show <laughs> be the extraterrestrial peace be with you Allah Hafiz.